You are now chopping it up with the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. Of course, I'm Taryn Williams. Thank you so much for clicking on this episode and checking it out. So in this episode, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be briefly talking about the very first season of Peacemaker on HBO Max, the DCEUs. I think it's, it's actually one of their first TV series that they're actually doing. Created by James Gunn, who directed the Guardians of the Galaxy movies 1 and 2, who's going to be directing Volume 3, who also did the Suicide Squad reboot movie, if you will. So we're going to talk about it. And honestly, and I think for a lot of people, myself included, Peacemaker was a surprise hit. Like, I didn't know a whole lot about the Peacemaker character. I was like, okay, well, whatever. You know, I guess I'll look in, you know, I'll guess I'll watch it. And the best part about Peacemaker is the intro. It has probably one of the best intros I've seen on TV in a long time. Like, it's probably one of the most unskippable intros, I think, in TV history. Like, you just can't skip it. Like, it's so good. It's just so... I can't even... Me talking about it doesn't do it justice. So, please, if you don't do anything else for Peacemaker, watch the intro. Like, just Google... Just YouTube the intro. Watch it. I think it's like a minute. Like, a little over a minute. It's so good. It's just... The the entire cast dancing to some, like, you know, some 80s, you know, power. Like, some 80s rock and just them dancing. And they have these really stoic faces while doing all these goofy moves. It's hilarious. Excuse me. Mm, excuse me. I think also what makes it funny is that the intro, and so I watched the video today, was actually made some sense. That intro is basically if Peacemaker choreographed his own, like, music video, that's how it would probably look. So, in the, in the um, Peacemaker, the show picks up right after the Suicide Squad movie ends, where if you didn't see the Suicide Squad movie, uh, spoiler alert, actually spoiler alert for Peacemaker, the Suicide Squad movie, all that stuff. So, you know, in the movie, he fights, they, they're on a mission, figure out that they have to destroy Starro, which is this giant starfish alien, and he gets in, and Peacemaker gets into a fight with Rick Flag. They have this back and forth about, you know, doing the right thing, and, you know, for justice, and what's, what's duty, and what's honor, and what's, you know, like, you know, things like that. And Peacemaker kills Rick Flag, And so that's kind of where that movie, part into that movie, and then, of course, um... Then, of course, we get into kind of the final scene, which is uh, Peacemaker and I can't think of who the character Idris Alba plays. My brain says Deadshot, but Deadshot was who uh, Will Smith played. Um, dang, I cannot think of his name. It's killing me. Hold on, I have to look that up real quick. Because it's like, uh, it's like Suicide. Hold on, I look up Suicide Squad 2 and I got to figure out who did he play in that movie. Bloodsport. There we go. Because I'm like, who did... It just, I always forget it's Bloodsport. So, yeah. So, you have the standoff between Bloodsport and Peacemaker. Bloodsport actually shoots Peacemaker with a smaller bullet that goes through the bullet that Peacemaker shoots. Hits Peacemaker in the neck. And he's out of commission. He's quote unquote, like He's just... You think he's dead, but... Come to find out at the end credit scenes of Suicide Squad 2, he's not dead. He's in the hospital. And then Peacemaker, the TV show, picks up right away him at the hospital. He gets cleared. He's healthy. And he can leave. And you think, okay, so what's the tone of the show? They actually don't do the intro until after his like first conversation with uh, Jamil, who's like the janitor who works at the hospital. They have the funniest back and forth. Just dumb shit is being said. <laughs> like, it's hilarious. And that kind of sets the tone for the show. And I think after that conversation is when they do the intro. And the intro just takes it up from there. So, you basically... is So, basically, Peacemaker is kind of... They're kind of an extension of Task Force X, pretty much. They're not the traditional Suicide Squad, quote-unquote. But they're kind of like a branch version. They're kind of like an abridged version of Task Force X. So, you have Hardcore, who was in Suicide Squad 2. You have... Uh, yeah, so you have Hardcore who's in Suicide Squad 2. I'm actually looking up the cast of Peacemaker to make sure I get some of the key people. Um, John Economo, who's in, who was in Suicide Squad as well. So they're kind of the two carryovers from the Suicide Squad movie. And you have the new character, who's uh, Laota, who you find out is actually Amanda Waller's daughter. Who gets pushed in. And then you have Adrian Chase, who plays Vigilante. And Vigilante is absolutely hilarious. I have questions about Vigilante, too. And... It's just kind of this 
you go they go through these you know they have this mission and they're kind of the forgotten you know they're kind of the you know they are the suicide squad they don't really care about it. no one knows who they are they just kind of got to do this mission and of course there's Mern who's kind of the person who's leading them and then this bunch of weird shit happening but is this such a because Peacemaker is so out of touch with the world like he's still in the like heavy 70s 80s like power like big hair metal bands and 80s rock and just he's so out of it like he's so childish that is kind of a turn off at first but then you learn through the ep- through the series that you know there's just some stuff of why he's kind of the way he is you know he saw his brother die in a very you know vicious and jarring way which he kind of did it his dad forced him to fight so he kind of killed his own brother it was an accident it wasn't on purpose but it happened and it scarred him and so he actually ended up making this prayer saying that he wanted peace like he wanted to get peace and he wanted you know the, his kind of his version of peace his way of doing it you know to stop all the bad people to create peace in his way so that's kind of how peacemaker got his vow if you will his best friend is Eagle Eagly, which is absolutely hilarious. Eagly also steals the show because I'm pretty sure Eagly is CG. I'm pretty sure, but just the way that they act, they make Eagly seem like it's really smart, but really it's just an eagle. But yeah, like all the characters kind of play off this idea of, you know, they all kind of have their secrets. They're all trying to get to know each other. You know, Hardcore is very skeptical of Adebayo in the beginning because she's like, "Where did you come from? Where's your credentials and all this stuff?" And then they find out. Towards the end of the season, that she's Amanda Waller's, you know, daughter and all this stuff. And like, wait, you work for Waller and all this stuff? You know, hardcore of course is very well. She's she's very battle tested. She's you know keeps to herself. You know, I think like in the first in the very first episode, really, she's just after they finish kind of their initial briefing and kind of getting to know the team a little bit. She just wants to go to a bar, have a beer, maybe watch some sports. That's it. She gets hit on by a group of three guys. She has to break one of their arms and kind of shoot them away. Then Peacemaker comes and she's like, fuck. Like, I just want peace. Like, I just want, you know, I just want to have a beer here, unwind, and go about my day. And I think one of the big things of the first season of Peacemaker is you learn everyone's version of peace. I think it's a very big theme throughout the show. Like, you know, you kind of figure out. What is peace to each one of these characters? You know, at the beginning, Hardcore just wants to be left alone. But then she realizes, you know, the team and kind of keeping the team safe, you know, and the kind of having each other's back is kind of keeps her together. You know, on a bio, she just wants to be with her wife and her dog and just that's kind of it. You know, Peacemaker, of course, has his very vivid, colorful depiction of peace, you know, and actually you learn um, for uh, a Conomo's character. That kind of he just wanted to kind of be invisible. You know, he kind of, this there's this running joke about his dyed beard. And on the very, in the season finale, he talked about his dyed beard. And how he did it to try to look younger. He thought nobody would notice him. But Peacemaker kept ragging on him the entire series about it. And that really kind of hurt. Because he just wanted to be left alone, invisible. You know, he did it to kind of find his peace within his self-confidence. Because he's, you know, he's like, you know, he's a bigger guy. Never really had a girlfriend. Never really had anyone to be in a relationship with. And he just kind of. You know, wanted to, he just was trying to find some acceptance for himself. And Vigilante just doesn't care. Like, Vigilante is so out there. He's so busted. Like, he doesn't have any empathy. He doesn't have any remorse or regards. I I want to say he's he's got to have some super soldier something. Like, DC, he has something in him. Because he heals too damn fast. Like, he, you know, like, I don't know if in the comics he has any super soldier stuff or any powers, but Vigilante, in this show, he heals too damn fast. Like, at the end of the season, after they kind of go through their final mission, most of them are in the hospital. And Vigilante gets shot, like, in his side, and he's bleeding out, and, but maybe in, maybe, I guess, it seemed like, well, I think the time jump, so maybe a day. But like he seemed to heal super quick. He healed and hopped out of a window and was gone. So I don't know. There's some stuff about Vigilante that I need to I need to look into. But of course, he has stuff with his dad, where his dad is this extremely racist white supremacist, you know, who is white dragon in the comics, is super racist white supremacist villain and they have to deal with him. But really they're not he's not even the big bad of the show, really. The big bad is these uh, these aliens called the Butterfly that are like invading Earth. So you think they're evil. You find out Mern, who's 
actually kind of running the team is actually a butterfly that abandoned the other butterfly who's kind of a what's the word kind of a, a kind of committed treason against his fellow butterfly you know mates and culture like his butterfly aliens so yeah it was just like a lot of a lot of these things a lot of these pieces and you think the butterflies are bad they're not really bad. By the end of the day, you realize they're not really bad. They probably went about it kind of the wrong way, but they're not really bad. Like, like I think Augie's his name, his Peacemaker's dad, he's really bad. Like, he has very fucked up values, very fucked up morals. And so he's kind of like the bad, but really, he's not even that big of a threat compared to the butterflies. And also, what happens is after Peacemaker kills his dad, he starts having visions of his dad. So now his dad is kind of like in his mind, which is very reminiscent of the Joker in Batman Arkham Knight, if you play that. The Joker's in the game, but he's not really in the game. He's in Batman's head because Batman kills him in another game. But because of all their interactions, a piece of the Joker like lives with Batman. And the Joker like, will pop up and talk to you and talk smack and stuff like that. So I think that's going to carry over. So now that his dad is like in his mind, in his mind space. I think that's going to carry over in the season two. Where now, you know, Peacemaker is going to have to deal with this ever threat of his. Because now you know, his mind was like, he had some rough stuff. But now he has this other piece of his dad being in his mind. And constantly antagonizing and talking shit to him. It's going to be crazy. Like it's, they all very green the season two. So there will be a season two of Peacemaker. But Peacemaker is, is hilarious. There is like, at first, there are a couple of episodes where there's like, you know, some nudity and some stuff like that. But it kind of gets away from that. It kind of sets up the character and some of the stuff. And they kind of get away from that part. And it's bloody. And it's vulgar. Like, there's a lot of blood. But they want Peacemaker to be a douchebag Captain America. And you really do kind of see that at times where he's just a douchebag Captain America. Like, even though he's like probably, you know, in his mid 30s, probably like 33, I think. But he acts like he's about. 14 you know and this kind of his mind space and just kind of where he's at and just seeing how the growth of the characters and how everyone you know evolves and things like that which is really cool like it's actually fun there are some deeper cut pieces to it again like one of the things is kind of finding your peace and what is peace to you and what are, and how far are you willing to go to kind of obtain peace you know if you will however you see it but it's really funny like there's some really cool moments like, actually in and one of the biggest reveals, again, spoiler alert, is at the end of the, the last episode of season one, there's this big Justice League cameo, which is insane. Because they tease and they mention it, because right before their mission, Autobio calls Waller and is like, hey mom, can you get the Justice League? And she kind of yells and kind of cusses them out and all this stuff. But she never says yes or no. So at the end of the mission, the Justice League pop-up is Flash, Aquaman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. And they actually got Ezra Miller and Justin Momoa to reprise the roles of The Flash and Aquaman, respectively. And Superman and Wonder Woman were just kind of CGI, or maybe they were just like stunt doubles. You know, they were kind of grayed out and blacked out, so you couldn't really see them. But they were there, and they were just, it was just really cool to just see that, to see that they're canon. They also mentioned like Kite Man and Peacemaker. They mentioned uh, Batmite and Peacemaker. So they mentioned some, you know, some kind of some deep cuts in DC lore. So maybe, hopefully. Get to see some of that. They also missing Green Arrow. So yeah, there might be some stuff. Maybe in season two we'll get some other heroes. I hope I really hope Kite Man pops up in season two. Because Kite Man is a big character in the Harley Quinn show. If you haven't watched that, please watch that too. Because that's also really good. Kite Man's a big piece of that story. So it'd be cool if he popped up in uh another you know another DC uh, EU property. But yeah, go check out Peacemaker. It's really funny. John Cena does a hell of a job. Like, I was really curious to see, like, how would he play the character and portray the character. He does a great... You can just tell he was in it. Him and James Gunn, they probably just, like, he just was in He's in the role. He is Peacemaker. No one else can be a Peacemaker. Like, it just works, and it's hilarious. It's a lot of fun. If this And I think I like seeing DC do something serious, but not take itself too serious, because that's something that DC has been missing, where they haven't had that balance of funny and serious it's always been like too serious and not really joking because they're comic books like come on these are over the top characters let them be over the top and peacemaker if peacemaker is kind of where the dceu is gonna go where with some humor with some you know maybe some more adult humor some kind of dry humor there's some stuff like that so they don't take themselves too seriously I think it's great. So peacemaker hopefully is a great foot forward. I know they're gonna be making a green lantern 
uh, show on HBO Max, which I will be checking out as well. So, I definitely give Peacemaker easily a 9 out of 10. Like, it gets like a 4.5 out of 5. Like, it was so good. So funny. I had to watch them all. At first, I was like, I'm not sure if I'm going to watch this. Had to watch it. Had to binge it. Had to keep up on it because it's so good. Can't wait for season 2, which will probably come out probably 2024, probably 2025. Like, it'll probably be a couple of years in between. Um, between, or, you know, before we get to a new Peacemaker season. But it was really good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And, yeah, you guys should definitely check it out. I give it two thumbs up all the way up. And just check it out. Also, just the intro. The intro alone will hook you. Because you're watching, you're like, what? This is kind of weird. But you just, you won't skip it. Because it's just too good. It hooks you. But, yeah, thank you so much for checking out this brand new episode of the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. I hope you all enjoyed the podcast. I hope you guys check out the show. Greatly appreciate it. Again, I always post my podcast. I always go on Spotify, Anchor, some other places. And I also post... The podcast on YouTube. So when the podcast goes up on Spotify, it's up on YouTube as well. So always remember that so you can watch, you can listen to it in two places. Support it in both places. I will greatly appreciate it. All in forever, slice and dice and game. It's not just a motto, it's a lifestyle. I'll see you in the podcast. Later. <laughs>